Hello students, this is an introductory uh, video on vectors. Uh, we have studied one data structure in P360 and we did not give it a name. Uh, we did not classify it as a data structure, but we did use it a lot and that is arrays. Arrays are fantastic. They're very fast. We can do indexing with arrays. You have sorted and searched through arrays and done a lot of array processing. However, um, what we're going to explore today is vectors. The name vector is kind of a misnomer. It's just like a glorified dynamic array. So I'm going to say that the restrictions with the arrays that you can't dynamically change the size of the array once you declare the size of the array, you're kind of restricted to using that size and working within it. But a lot of times you might not know what the size of the, uh, you know, what the size of the input is going to be. You might be given a large file and you might be asked to read from the file and input it into a storage data structure. And if you declare an array of size 100 and you have 500 lines, then you're kind of pretty much stuck. So uh, the way out of this is to have dynamic arrays, which uh, dynamic arrays look like arrays, uh, but, you, the, but it offers nice features in that you can change the size as you go along and as your needs change. Um, vectors, they are called vectors in C++. There is a library, a vector library. And as you study classes and objects, you will see that there is a vector class and, it, and there are lots of functions that we can use, which make it easy for us to process vectors. So that's what we're going to be kind of doing an introductory overview. So here we go. Vectors are similar to arrays. They're sequential, which means everything is stored one after the other. And uh, you can put into a vector, you can put an integer or a string, or you can put objects of any kind. Um, here we go, size of the data structure is not fixed, which is good. So we can keep changing it as our program requirements change. And, um, and it's part of the standard template library of C++, which means um, we can use a lot of functions which some other folk have written for us. Now, what can we do? What are the advantages of arrays? We, number one, programmer does, does not need to keep track of the index. So we don't need to know at which position we are. The, nice th the other nice thing which you will explore in your assignment later on is that uh, if you wanted to insert something into an array, that was hard. So let's say at position five, you wanted to put something in and the array was already full. That's a difficult proposition. But with a vector, we can insert elements either at the end or we can insert them in, into the middle. We can remove elements without leaving holes inside. So all of this kind of processing is kind of great. So, and we can do all of this processing using the operations that are given to us uh, by the C++ vector library. Another feature that I will um, kind of introduce is uh, the concept of iterators. Uh, iterators are neat because when you have a data structure and uh, like like a vector and you don't know uh, how big it is uh, and its size keeps changing and you don't necessarily want to be locked down to a particular size but what you can do is you can have a pointer that points to the beginning of this vector and a pointer that points to the end of the vector and then you can process or process all of the elements from the beginning of the vector of the vector to the end of the vector, right? So one simple example of what our vector declarations are gonna look like, it looks very different from an array, but, you know, internally, uh, when we think about it, it's just array-like, except that it has a little more powerful in terms of flexibility. We can add more elements to it. We can insert and delete elements from the middle, and all of that will get taken care of automatically by C++. So here we go. We need to include the standard vector um, library. And, and just like we do it for um, standard cout, we have to prefix it by the standard namespace name when we declare. So here we've got a ve declaring a vector of integer type. This is new. This stuff that we're doing here is new because we usually just set something like integer x before. And now what we're doing is we have this kind of diamond angle bracket in which we are 
um, indicating what type of elements go into it. So for example, if I wanted to create a vector of um, char, then I would say vector, and then I would say char. So this tells me that I'm going to store chars in my vector. I can do string, and I can do, if I have an object which is, uh, I don't know, a dog, then I can actually do a vector of dogs right here. So this, this, is, this is kind of very powerful. And so this is how I declared. I've declared a vector of numbers. And um, now, the, how do I add? I use mem, I use functions. If you recall from your P360 class, when you, whenever you had an object and you wanted to do the object to do something, then the way to do that was using the dot operator. So this pushback is actually a function that pushes the number two onto this vector. And so therefore, this is what our vector is going to look like. It's only going to have the number two. Now I push back three, and this gets added to the back of the vector, right? How do I access elements? Now this is, now remember exactly like the arrays, the indexing is going to go, right? The position is the first one is at position zero. The second one is at position one. The total size of the vector is two, right? So if I say, what is the element at position zero, then we know that two is at position zero, right? Now, if if I say pop back, I needed to have put pop back here. It's actually pop back. Pop back. If I do numbers dot pop back, then three is going to get removed from this vector, right? And so, um, so these are the basic methods. Let's go and look at some more methods and actually run a program. Here we go. So here's a simple a program which compares how arrays look versus vectors. I've declared an array of four elements and uh, I'm just traversing this array and, and adding the number 66 to each and every element of this vector, of this array. So I'm going to have 66, 66, 66, and 66 right here, right? Because I'm doing it four times. And now what I would like to do is having done that, I print them all out and it's going to print them one under the other. But if I do numbers five, right? I've got zero, one, two, three, I've got four elements. Even if I do numbers four, I'm going to get into a problem because I only created um, an array of four spaces, and those spaces are going to go 0, 1, 2, and 3. I cannot dynamically grow the size of this vector. So this one, so this is the shortcoming of the vector, of the arrays. Now, here, instead of that, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to run this and show you that, you see that? So here, this is um, this gives me a, a warning. So I'm going to mute the arrays part of my declaration and then go to vectors and say, I can solve this problem of dynamically adding stuff by creating a vector of integers. I'm going to call it nums. I'm checking here to see, you see now this is a little bit of detailing into what methods are available for me. So here, method, to check if vector is empty. I did not have these features in arrays. And if it's if it's empty, I'm going to go and add. So pushback adds the number 66. Now I've got a vector that looks like 66, 66, 66, and 66, right? And then I print that out. So some of the output that you see is, is from, from this printing out. Now what I do is I'm actually adding um, the number 67, putting pushing the number 67 and 68 onto the vector. I was not able to do that on arrays because here, as you can see, I do not have any size restriction. I just declared a vector and said, I don't know what the size is going to be, but it's going to grow as I process. So that was one big difference between the array in which I had to give four, and here I'm not giving any size. You can add the size too, and then keep changing that but you know we don't want to go into that for now. So 
Now I've added 66 and 67 and my program has worked fine. I have not received any um, warnings at all. Um, now just a little bit about this feature, nums.size. So this uh, method or a function that returns the size, the current size, I'm going to say, current size of the vector. And so in this case, now it's going to actually be equal to 6. Uh, and then I can print. As you can see, I'm using indexing exactly like I'd used for the arrays right here to index into the vector to print it. So in some senses, you can say, you know, I'm kind of mixing and matching um, uh, the array notation right here. However, we have to keep in mind that, that if you index an element that's not there, then the program will crash. So, so for example, now, if the vector was empty and then we try to index into this element syntactically, everything will go through. But when you run the program, it's going to crash. Now, another important thing that I wanted to highlight here is is the concept of iterators. Iterators are the same as pointers. And I'm declaring an iterator called iter, which points to the beginning of my vector. So iter points to beginning of vector. And what I'm saying is, while iter is less than, the end and nums dot end is is the end of the vector. Is a pointer to the end. So while we have not reached that, if you remember from your P three hundred and sixty. I'm using the dereferencing operator, star operator right here, to print the contents of, uh, of, uh, of the vector. And how do I do that? Because I know iter points to the beginning. I started at the beginning, and I dereference it. I go straight to the first number in the vector, which is 66, and I print that out because I know that I pushed 66, and this was the first element. This was the beginning of the vector. So iter initially is pointing here. And then because I added 67 and 68, the end of the vector is going to be 68. So here I've got, um, so I'm actually printing them out and I'm incrementing iter exactly as you would do with pointer arithmetic and I'm incrementing that. So I go all the way to the end of the vector and I print that out. So as you can see, the output uh, reflects that. I will actually mute uh, the output here so we do not have uh, okay and maybe I can just say do nothing right there just so we're not having a whole ton of output statements that are confusing and so so let me just print this out and then you will see that it should print six elements 66 66 66 66 67 and 68 are printed here now the last two uh, methods that i just like to show uh, two or three is pop back pop back removes the last element so it's going to go ahead and remove the number 68 then I go back and say, can you please get for me the last element, which is nums.back. So this just removes the last element, but does not return it. And this one removes the last element, and returns it. So because it returns it, I'm storing it into the integer n. 
And now when I print the vector, I get 66, 66, 66, and 66, which means it has removed it. The method now that I've used is not indexing, but I've used the at which um, returns the element at the given position. So as you can see, I have used multiple ways to traverse this ve vector. I have used, in this case, I have used the regular indexing, uh, array-like indexing. I have used pointers to traverse it. And I've also used the at method to traverse the vector, right? And at all times, I have used nums.size because I know that at any given time, the size of my vector may change. So vectors are really useful. And the first assignment is going to be based off of that. In your assignment, you're going to be doing even more fun things like using methods to exactly like you used begin, end, size, at, and, and all of these methods that we went over in this introductory video, you will be going over um, how to erase or how to remove elements from the middle of the vector because, you know, uh, back and pop back only remove from the end. So how to remove them from the middle, how to sort a vector, and, um, and uh, how, to, uh, 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 how to do uh, vectors, use vectors which have got strings. So, and how to read from a file and put the elements into a vector and then process that.